there again, kiddies. Both sides, all straight bass under the boat. I'm gonna go until I start losing these marks because I want to drift through them. You know, you don't want you don't want to stop as soon as you see them, unless it's a dead calm day. But we got a little breeze, so we want to go past the piece, past the piece of water that we like, past these fish, just a little bit until we stop marking them. You see, they're on that little bit of a drop off there, still marking them. Not really under us anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the boat. I'm gonna go ahead and turn. Okay. Because these guys are all fishing off one side of the boat. We want to use the whole length of the boat here. Alright, so this is, this is the first time my brother's jigging with this type of spoon. Now even though it's shallow, we're drifting so it'll pay out, you know, scope away from us. So I'm gonna drop it down straight to the bottom. It's very shallow here. Uh -huh. 13 foot, something hit it on the way down. Did you see it stop? <laughs> something hit it about eight feet down. All right, so I drop it to the bottom to get started. Then I'll give it up just a couple cranks. So you see the line go slack, it's on bottom, right? Give it just a couple cranks. And we'll start with this. Now we're gonna go up and down with it. Now, if you watch the line, you might need to get a little closer if you see the line. If I, I wanna stay tight to the spoon so I'll feel the slightest tick. But if I stay too tight, like if I leave the line like this, I kill the action of the spoon. See how the line's so straight? The spoon looks terrible. So I gotta put some slack in the line. But if I do this, now I'm not gonna feel the hit on the way down and I just got fouled. So if I just drop it too fast, if I get hit, I'm not gonna feel it and I fouled up my line. So the trick is to find something in between. Drop it fast enough so you don't kill the action, but slow enough so you feel the tick. So try to keep three or four inches of slack. So watch. Oh, he just had one. All right, so you see that little slight bow in the line? Slight bow. A little faster and the spoon falls at different rates each time sometimes it flutters sideways sometimes the tail just goes down and up but you got to master it and you can get it it's not hard to do it really it just takes a little time just keep a slight slack in the line just enough to not kill the action of the spoon and just tight enough so you'll feel when he ticks now i'll jig a few times like this if i don't feel anything i'll give it a couple cranks i'll do it again and another real popular way here drop it straight to the bottom and it's called squidding you just reel straight up man and then you just reel steady straight up you can vary the speed this is a high speed reel i'll just drop it straight down and reel it up we call it squidding and it works it works really well sometimes especially in deeper water and that's it we're gonna whack a few and show you what they look like Tim, don't slip on that thing under your foot. Keep the nice. fish in the water this time, okay? Big one, Tim! Ooh. He's got a hoss! He's down here. Nope. Doesn't feel that? like it yet. I don't know. Nice. Sure. It's a good fish. Yeah. Oh, you got it in the mouth? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> as soon as I say it is. <laughs> we don't want to see splashing, though. You know what I'm talking about? Yep. Now when I say splashing, we don't want to see because when that spoon is underwater and the fish can thrash, the water controls it and slows down the spoon, right? If it's in the air, it can thrash and be lost. That's it. Manhandle that fish. Hold this, Robert. Yep, you got it. Don't drop it. Woo! That's a nice fish. Look at that. What's wrong with that? Look at that one. <laughs> Here you go, Timmy. On that shattered glass. Does it have another spoon in its mouth? It's hundred bucks. No, it doesn't. That's a hundred bucks. I lost a spoon. So if, you, if you cranked on you with a spoon, it's a hundred bucks. You know? Stay. Stay on your own. Good fish, Tim. Way to break the ice. Thank you. That is a nice fish, right? Oh, yeah. That's a beaut. 12-pounder. Solid 12-pound fish. I don't want to eat one. Dorsal fin's pounds. already up. The fight was short, so I'm going to go ahead and send her off. Now, as you get good with this, I... I tell my friends, you know, my buddies, my sons, no surprise hits. And surprise hit is when you see a guy doing this, he's just jigging. And then all of a sudden there's a fish there. He didn't feel that fish. He was sweeping it up for the, to move the jig again. And that's when he felt the fish was there. The fish already had it. So really try to concentrate and feel that hit on the way down so you can set the hook and avoid those surprise hits. The first few fish you're going to get are going to be surprised. But as you get better with it, you'll feel that just slight tick and you can really cross his eyes. But you feel that tick and you know he's there. Because they're only going to hold it for so long. Sometimes they'll grab it and swim with it. 
But most times, you know, it's a hard steel object. They're going to drop it when they feel it's not fleshy, you know. There's fish under the boat. And we're positioned really nice, too, so we're going to come right across them. I saw you look at the screen. Were you squirting it or you were jerking it? No, I was jumping it. All right, everyone drop, drop down. Yeah, you doubled up. I knew it was gonna go off. Guys, Tommy drop yours right down. There's fish chasing his. Job, man. That was two you had on. I'm just judging by the way it's bouncing. Yeah. Nice, man. You had one on, I heard it. Your bail flipped him, Tommy? Drop it right down, Tommy. Keep his in the water. Drop it right down, there's fish chasing him. All right, reel up to the surface, just a few feet down, because they're right below his. All right, bring it to me. You can grab the spoon and lift them right in. Oh, All right. Uh, Bring it to me, Tim. Yeah. There's so many fish down there. Now there's a pair. Look at that guy. There's a pair, a pair of uh, pretty fish right there. In Mine's my mouth. Paper. Very pretty fish. Hold that, Tim. There's a beautiful nickels. Ben Parker spoon. <laughs> we able to do some more filming. Why not? I had the camera. The camera on me <laughs> right, like it should be drop it right now. for guys that are brand new to this and never done this anything like this before we've only been fishing about 30 minutes and we've probably done eight drifts in just 30 minutes as soon as we're off the fish we're back on them we don't spend any time jigging over dead water we really rely heavily on electronics for this if they're not under the boat move go find them again it's very proactive you know we're constantly uh attacking we're always on offense Right when you say drop that, you mean Gully Dick. Well, I mean, just feed it back down because. Yeah. Rod Tim down first. Right yeah. down. Right when you say drop that, you mean Gully Dick. Nice job, man. Drill yours in. Actually. Drop it back down and just watch his because you want we want to poach one off of him. That's cool. He's coming up by Mike. Mike, poach one off of him. Lots of them, bro. Lots of them down there. You know what I'm talking about, right? When you drop it, that's that gray area. Yeah. Where you want it to be slack. You're better off too slack than too tight. That's a that's that's a really good point. You're better off too slack than too tight. If you're too slack, you may not feel a hit, but you'll hook more fish because you're not killing the action of your spoon. The action on the spoon is how the spoon flutters through the water. If you have any tight tightness on your line, you, you won't flutter. It'll just drop straight down, straight up and down. Another beauty. Good job, Tommy. All right. I don't know if you can tell by the video because when someone's hooked up, it's fast and furious. But when someone's hooked up, these guys aren't clearing lines. They're dropping lines down. We've had a few tangles because of that, but we want to catch more fish. You reel a striper up, I guarantee every striper you reel up has got other stripers chasing behind it. So that fish is swimming around, you're fighting him, that spoon is flaring, it's flashing, they're all trying to steal it from him. You drop your another spoon down, have your buddy drop one down, multiple hookups. You could turn a two or three fish day into a five or six fish day. Or even a one fish day into a two fish day, and that could be a big deal. Be aggressive, go for it. Look at this, there he is. Dude, you can even see the line up there. You see, see that? I can see the spoon and I can see the fish. And see the other stripers? This was, <laughs> hey guys, this is proof. This is what I've been saying the whole time. One, two, three, four, five. Drop your lines down, Mike. Let me put this tarragon stuff on here. Listen to that. Salt on there. I applied this, uh, mud slide on here a few days ago hear that it sounds like it's you know motor feels rough in my hand because of all this salt now the funny part is <laughs> i didn't think water was going to rinse this off so i just started spraying the other side of the motor and as soon as i hit it this stuff was gone 
I honestly didn't think it would take it off without scrubbing. So I just went and hit it and hit it with the water. You can see that salt is gone. This was the worst side being in the sun. So I'm gonna hit it with the water with the rest so you can see. I am pretty shocked. I swear I thought I was gonna take scrubbing. Watch this. It's gone. The roughness is gone. Can you, can you hear that? It knocked that salt right off. That's the whole point, right? Being able to clean it just by spraying it, not having to scrub it. All right, so far I like this stuff.